All right, everybody, welcome to the Comic Book Showcase on YouTube. We're excited to bring you guys yet another wonderful episode. It is my birthday right now, and I am very drunk, and I am living out a dream I have had for a long time. For the longest time, I have wanted us to do an episode where we drunkenly reviewed the first appearance of Batman in Detective Comics number 27. This episode is called Drunk Detective Comics number 27 for that reason. Uh, I'm pretty drunk right now. I've been, it's my birthday. Uh, I finished about like you know, like half to a third of this bottle of Sailor Jerry's. I'm feeling very nice right now. Uh, we're going to talk about the first appearance of Batman. Do you guys want to introduce yourself? I forget how we introduce ourselves. Uh, so I'll introduce myself next just because uh, I feel like it. Uh, so I am Jamie Carr. I am the founder of the Marvel DC Databases. And I'm here because Billy is awesome and this topic is awesome. And let's give her... I'm eating my birthday cake. I'll go <laughs> next. I'm Rab, and I'm an administrator on the DC database, and I'm the only one who's not drunk because I I don't drink, but I am drinking this weird homemade root beer that my dad got for me, and that I is... am eating leftover cake for my birthday, which was last weekend. Rab, stop trying to make this about you. Um, <laughs> that is completely completely acceptable. Rab is our designated driver for the evening. And Kyle? I'm Kyle, and I'm an administrator on the DC database, and I'm one of only two other people that are drinking. So, all right. Let's all start. right, so... I have no idea how this night is going to work out. It could be amazing. It could be terrible. My hope, uh, in the spirit of Chris Gethard, one of my favorite comedians, is that if it is terrible, it goes all the way over to the other side and becomes so terrible that it is then again entertaining to watch again. Um, I'm very excited about this. I hope that we can do more episodes like this in the future. I drunk appearance, the first appearance of Batman. That's I'll do anything. I'll do uh, first appearance of Thor on Ecstasy. I'll do next week, Amazing Fantasy number 15, first appearance of Spider-Man on Crystal Map. I'll be here. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, <laughs> so the, the Detective Comics number 27, it starts off, uh, we're just going to, let's just break down the story first of all for everybody. It starts off with, uh, with Bruce Wayne and Jim Gordon sitting in the, with the Gordon's apartment together, just smoking pipes and sitting in their chairs, and immediately I have so many questions about these two people. Uh, Bruce, like, they don't have anything to talk, there's no reason for Bruce Wayne to be there. He's just like, oh, is anything going on recently? Any, anything exciting happening these days, Commissioner? And Jim Gordon says, he says, oh, nothing, except this Batman fellow puzzles me. So he's like, like, oh yeah, no, there's nothing really going on. Oh, right, except there's a guy dressed up like a bat who goes around solving all of our crime sports and murdering people. I forgot to mention, that's a thing that's been going on. And then Jim Gordon gets a call on the phone that there's been a murder. And immediately, I have no idea what kind of relationship he has with Bruce Wayne, but immediately he's like, hey, Bruce Wayne, you want to go see a dead body? Like, they're not, they're not talking about, I don't know why, that does not give us any reason why they're friends. But Bruce Wayne does decide, he's like, oh, yeah, no, sure, I nothing else to do, might as well. Oh, yeah, I'd be cool to see a murder, Jim Gordon, not that I'm into that kind of stuff. Um, I, I, got, I gotta ask, I gotta ask, what fucking protocols in 1939 are broken by the commissioner of the police going, hey, Mr. Socialite Bruce Wayne, let's go to a crime scene, like, mid-investigation. Like, what protocols are being broken here? Oh, and I, just for the viewers at home, I should make a couple of fucking warnings here. A, there may or may not be some fucking expletives in this. And B, if you've not read it already, there's some... Spoiler alert. Spoiler uh, alert. I'm going to ruin the shit out of this story for you. You've had <laughs> 75 years to read it. Fuck you. That's what i got to say. So there's been a murder. Uh, Lambert, the no first name given chemical king of Gotham City has been found dead in his apartment. And the only suspect is his son, whose fingerprints were found on the knife. Um, uh, what, and that, so then the, uh, it turns out, like, the son didn't do And Bruce Wayne is just like, oh, yeah, like, you guys got, I'm just going to go home to do 
uh, wealthy socialite things, something, something, lady, and then he he ducks out for unexplained reasons. We don't know, and that's another, we don't know who Bruce Wayne is yet at this point. We just think Bruce Wayne is a boring, unexplained character who's just like Jim Gordon's buddy who follows him around. So there's a there's a second murder that Jim Gordon receives a phone call about. This guy Lambert is involved in a chemical syndicate. The story is called The Case of the Chemical Syndicate. And at the, the next guy's house, Stephen Crane, that guy gets murdered also immediately. Uh, and Batman shows up on the roof to confront the two murderers. Whoa, whoa, whoa. okay, before, before you get there, I think you've missed a lot of key plot details. Like, yeah. when Gordon shows up at the first fucking house, the first thing he says to the key suspect is, Hey, how's it going? Um, so I hear you killed your dad. <laughs> <laughs> he just drops that bomb, like, casually, like, hey, what's up? You killed your dad, so how's that going for you? How's that working out? Like, like in the short, they get right to the point with this one. They say you killed your father! Yeah, he's he's very just pedestrian about it. Like, and not not even, he's not even, doesn't even sound like disappointed. Just like a principal, like, alright, tell me what's going on. Batman, he gets to the next murder scene, and immediately, I, I'm, like, very sympathetic to these cops who don't like Batman at first. Uh, he catches the two guys on the roof, and he's far, he doesn't even talk to them. He just beats the shit out of them, and then throws one guy off a roof. And it, no questioning, literally no dialogue in that scene, other than those guys being like, oh, fuck, what's going on? And then the the next guy in the chemical syndicate, uh, Fred Fred is it Fred Rogers? Oh man, I'm behind on this. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's Rogers. Yeah, yeah. Is yeah. He, is, but he, is he in the chemical syndicate or is he like some unwitting hap though? Paul like, Rogers. Kind of, um, he's, he's Paul he's, Rogers, which is just as bad. Paul <laughs> Rogers and Fred Rogers—they're both people who exist. Birthday <laughs> mm. <Okay>. cake. Mm. <laughs> I feel left out that my birthday wasn't this week, guys. Well, yeah, Kyle. I didn't want to say anything, Kyle, but we've all been thinking about that this entire time. Um, I know. I don't have any birthday cake, and I'm a little we, upset. Yeah, we've all been thinking about how out of place you are in this conversation, and to be honest, it's making the rest of us very uncomfortable also. Uh, and and so then then the Paul Rogers, the final, the third member of the Chemical Syndicate, goes to visit Alfred Stryker, his his dear friend. It's, oh, somebody's murdering every, oh, every one of us. And then that guy's henchman. Uh, it turns out that guy is evil. But instead of just murdering him in a normal person way, he knocks him out. And then play, he puts it. What is? It's like a guinea pig murder chamber. It's a giant glass case with nerve gas. So it's like this elaborate death trap that descends slowly from above while you're only tied by your hands. You could roll out from under it, but you choose not to, so you just wait for death from above. Yeah, but no, it's not... I, tied I, to the floor, though. Isn't he tied I, to the floor? No, he's, he's not tied, tied from above. He's just, like it. just sitting Is there. Is that like a belt? <laughs> That's we'll ne we'll never know what the what the original writers uh, intended, <laughs> um, but he I, what I love about this so much is that any other elaborate death trap I like I respect like when Doctor Doom builds a crazy death trap he's put time and scientific expertise into the fact that it's a slow death mechanism that you can theoretically think your way out of and not just shooting the, and this guy has no reason not to just shoot the student in the head. I don't know why he's committed to using nerve gas. And then Batman bursts in through the skylight. And Batman uh, runs inside the nerve gas thing and picks up a wrench and smashes it out because Batman's putting himself in personal danger. He plugs yeah. it with a hanky first. He gets yes. a hanky and plugs the gas and then breaks it anyway. <laughs> I, I did miss that. Um... Does he keep the hanky like? Is that the first use of the utility belt? Is to keep and the, it's the first, <laughs> the first thing we've ever seen in Batman's utility belt is a dainty handkerchief that he uses to plug a pipe. Oh, I never thought about that. Good, good, 
Good night, Kyle. Um, you need a page for the bat hanky. Yeah, <laughs> I'll get on that immediately because I have not done writing up this article. Um, so then, so then Batman he gets out and he beats the shit out of this guy, and then Alfred Stryker, the true villain of our piece, who's been orchestrating these events like a puppet master the entire time, that guy walks up and he doesn't see, he doesn't know Batman is there because Batman lives in the shadows. And sometimes it says that Batman's just accidentally hanging out in the corner, like, oh, what stuff's going on? Um, but then Paul Rogers explains it, and Alfred Stryker's like, oh, you survived? I'll have to kill you with the knife right now. Uh, and then Batman beats the shit out of that guy. Out. And then this, this is the most controversial moment of the story. This is the part that everybody talks about. Batman, he delivers, Batman delivers his exposition monologue and explains how he knew it was Alfred Stryker. And then Alfred Stryker, he says, uh, sure, I did it, but you won't send me to the chair for this. I'll... And he, like, kind of tries to push Batman away. And then Batman just, bam, punches him in the face over a railing to his death. There's a, a vat of acid. That's a horrible way to die. And Batman clearly intentionally punches this guy over the railing and murders him. And then his only comment is, a fitting end for his kind. And then he leaps out of the skylight. He does not give a shit that that guy just died. In fact, he takes a small amount of pleasure in it, I think. No, this, this whole, this this whole comic. The, yeah, the, this Batman is not the, the Batman we all know and love. This is not the guy that's like, I won't kill that guy. Like, don't use guns. He's like, I will punch your ass into a vat of acid because... Conveniently, there is a vat of acid in the basement of a mansion of a rich guy that is negotiating a contract of some ill repute that we don't fully understand that is never quite explained that just happens to be the semi-half-assed plot for this entire story. <laughs> I don't care about any of that. Well, How can he jump out the skylight? He just jumps up. Oh. That it is, he does not have a bat rope at this point. He just jumped all the way upwards through a ceiling window and is seems to be gliding upwards into the night. Um, Are you questioning the logistics of Batman? Is that what you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Batman, he is so easy. And it's not just he's like, like, oh my god, I murdered. He's so like chill and down with murders in this issue, which I kind of love. Uh, even earlier, uh, if we could get that panel running up again, uh, when he throws those dudes off the roof, you see him afterwards in his car, and he has this creepy smile on his face, like, like I've totally got half a bat boner right now. Uh, he he loves murdering these dudes. Uh, so, so that's uh, oh, this this was something that was brought up earlier. We are this issue is about Detective Comics number twenty seven. We are only discussing the Batman story. We are not discussing the other Detective Comics anthology stories such as Speed Saunders in The Killers of Kurdistan or Buck Marshall in Bullet Bluff. I wait, wait, we didn't, even finish, we didn't finish the story yet, though. No, we didn't? Oh, yeah, no, you were right. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Okay. Um, so he jumped out of the skylight, like, just up into space, and then there's, no, there's more panels. Yeah, and then later on that night, uh, Jim Gordon and Bruce Wayne are hanging out. And Jim Gordon is like, "Oh yeah, this Batman guy is hanging out." And I mean, like, I get he uh, he threw it, uh, he threw a dude to his death right in front of police officers. But that's, I mean, he helped us solve a murder. And if there's one thing I believe about crime, it's that it is a math. It's just one for one. Um, you kill somebody, you save somebody. That's it's an even slate. Uh, and then Bruce Wayne is like, yeah, whatever, nerd. I, I don't, I've never heard of that. And Jim Gordon, he, he, he lights his cigar because it, he also has he, multiple, <laughs> multiple tobacco consumption methods in this issue in one night. Can't pick. And he, uh, Bruce Wayne is a nice young chap, but he certainly must lead a boring life. Seems disinterested in everything. And then that they have that moment at the end where there's a there's a picture of a door creaking open and I can feel the dramatic bah, 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 bah. Bruce Wayne is the Batman and that's the dramatic reveal at the end of the decision. All right, I can feel this conversation uh, dev devolving into a drunken mess. 
Uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in to watch this on my birthday. You have no idea how happy that makes me. Uh, this, if you are interested, seriously, if you're interested in hearing us talk about more number one issues, uh, I'm actually planning a side podcast where I will be reviewing a lot of other number one issues first appearances uh, with some of my other friends. If you are interested, I don't know how much of it is going to be this drunk, but that's up to you to decide. Please leave us a comment. Tell us what you think of this video. Tell us uh, what your opinions are on the story. If you read it, other things you'd like us to review or talk about. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Have a good night. One more time. I'm Billy Arrowsmith. I'm Jamie Harry. I'm Rab Townsend. And I'm Kyle Theobald. All right, you guys are wonderful. Thank you very much. Have a good night. And that's a wrap for another episode of the Comic Book Showcase. Join us again live via chat or Twitter next week. Like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. And to learn more about today's topics, check out the Marvel and DC databases on Wikia, the ultimate resources for comic book information anywhere.